Hello and welcome to the award winning Mootopia MMYV. As Freak's release day has just happened and England are desperately trying to bore the fans and opposition to death at the Euros, we thought now would be a good time to do our Blind League 2 predictions for 2024-25 to season. Last season we got the top four correct, although in the wrong order. Let's get cracking! In 24th, we're going for Colchester United. Having struggled to stay up for the last couple of seasons and working on to a tight budget, I just think it could be Colchester's time to dip out of the EFL for a while. For 23rd, we've gone for a wild card choice, not County. Nothing personal County fans, but there's always going to be one surprise at the bottom end, and this season, we think it's going to be you. After Snakey's apprentice left for South Wales, and the wheels the wheels came off a bit of County last season, and without a manager who can get a song out of a squad assembled to play a unique style of football, I can see them in trouble. In 22nd, we've got Burslem's finest, Port Vale. Only gone for this, as it's been a while since Vale fans were calling for the head of the chairman, and I think, I feel like they're about to do another financial crisis. Our choice for 23rd is Grimsby Town, a very well supported club and probably the biggest club in Lincolnshire. They do however always seem to struggle to gather the 14 to 17 quality players to put together and push for anything higher than lower mid table. For 20th we've gone with Harrogate Town. I just think they won't be able to keep hold of any attacking talent they had last season and their defence was nearly as useless as the Dons. Cheltenham are a strange one for us. We honestly think they'll either make a run at the playoffs or, as we've gone for, have a completely meh season and finish 19th. Next, we have a club who were probably punching above their weight in League One for a long time, Fleetwood Town. They have a decent owner who doesn't mind spending a bit of cash and obviously for the wages of a League Two footballer, you can buy a street of houses in Blackpool so attracting players as they rebuild won't be a problem. 18th for the Cod Army. At 17th, we've gone for Walsall, a club that always has a decent side but also can never string anything any, together any type of form. One week they'll beat a, the runaway leaders 2-0 and the next they'll lose to a side who haven't won in 18 games. Inconsistency will once again keep Walsall out of the playoff picture. Assuming Morecambe survive until the season starts as the owner tries to sell the club and they currently have a very small pool of players. New owners always bring a bit of cash, which is the only reason they don't feature in the bottom two. 16 for Morecambe. Good luck, Shrimps fans. Hopefully you'll get the owner you deserve. Having sacked their most successful manager towards the end of last season, Accrington, who always operate with a small budget and punch above their weight, will be hoping for new owners and a cash injection. So, like Morecambe, they'll just about avoid relegation with a new owner. 15 for Stanley. At 14th, we've gone with Salford City, not because they won't have any money or a good manager, but because if they aren't sat inside the top four by November, we can see Carl Robinson being sacked by, tri ha by a trigger happy board. And this will lead to yet another rebuild at Salford. Next up, in 13th, we have a club that always seems to survive and in some seasons thrive, despite having a rotating cast of rogues and incompetents owning the club. Swindon Town are one of those clubs that you constantly wonder how they've not been wound up, or at least very least given point, point deductions. Always appearing to have financial problems, yet somehow all, also always putting together a talented team, mid-table Beckham. Nothing much to say about the team we've put in 12th. I just can't see the Exiles finish any bet higher, but also think there's enough crackpot clubs in League 2 this season to keep them well safe too. Next up is Bromney in 11th. I can see them sprinting out of the gates of high promotion last season, but running out of steam by Christmas. But I think their fans will be happy with a mid-table finish. In 10th, we've gone for AFC Wimbledon. After narrowly missing out on the playoffs and seeing some of their better performers at last season leave through the season, or in the, in the case of Alex Bass, his lone end, a lot is going to depend on recruitment at the dog track. But if they hold on to Ron and Curtis, they have a player who is too good for League 2 and is probably capable of creating and scoring enough to see them comfortable but not challenging for the playoffs. Tranmere are the first of the big clubs and I think they'll finish ninth, just failing to make the playoffs. Gillingham are the side we've gone for in eighth. 
Don's nemesis away from home, so that's at least three points in the bag for them. But we can't see them quite doing enough to make the playoffs. The first side we've put in our playoff spot is Chesterfield in 7th. After a couple of seasons outside the EFL with an experienced manager in Paul Cook, Chesterfield will be on high do for dominating the National League last season, as well as playing good football and play having a decent budget. These are our tips to win the playoffs. Next up in 6th is Barrow who if they manage to avoid postponements and keep their side together are more than capable of making the playoffs. Oh, and Barrow is a terrible place for visiting teams at this level owing to its location. Barrow could easily ask to be allowed to play in the League of Ireland. In fifth, we have beaten playoff finalists Crew Alexandra. A really good footballing side who will probably feel they can have a dip at the autos this season but I think fifth will be around round right for the railway men. In fourth it's our favourite away day of the season Carlisle United. A lot will depend on the rebuild at United in the summer but like Barrow they will pick up enough points at home to maintain a promotion challenge but as we said they'll be stopped by the playoffs in the playoffs by Chesterfield. Next up is the biggest club in League 2 Bradford City. Their football would be garbage, their pitch almost unplayable for November to March. But Graham Alexandra will take his side up, especially if they hold on to Andy Cook. In second place, we've put Doncaster Rovers. But this is assuming they hold on to Grant McCann as manager and they don't have a hangover from losing in the playoffs. Their flying finish to last season showed what their manager is capable of getting them out, out of the team. And in first place, obviously, it's the mighty MK Dons. Do what? But he can dream, can't he? Honestly. Seriously, though, with players who regularly phone in performances like a Horagon, and what seems like some excellent signings already this summer, if we hold on to Lord and Saviour, Max Dean and Ellis Harrison, we can win this league. But if the defence doesn't stop leaking goals or the manager brings Philip Marshall back, we are absolutely screwed. Obviously, this is all a bit of fun and just like last season, likely to be well wide of the mark. But let me know what you guys think in the comments or on X. Thanks so much for watching. Give my videos a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already and come on you dons!